Hey everybody, Mr. Snyder here, ready to start a brand new art lesson. Uh, today we're going to make something called a shoe fish. Now this is actually a project that I used to do way back when I was an elementary art teacher. I did it every year as the first project with my first graders and they really loved it because the very first thing I asked them to do on the very first day of class was to take off one of their shoes and they were like, what? Like, that's just crazy. To t Mr. Snyder asking us to take a shoe off and so they would take a shoe. Uh, this is not my shoe, by the way. This is uh, one of my daughter's old sandals. All right. And you're going to take this or your shoe and transform it into a shoe fish. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And uh, we're going to talk about color choices. I decided to make mine a rainbow shoe fish. I saw it fitting. Uh, I know right now the uh, rainbow hunts are really popular. And so um, I thought this might be something that you could create and then decorate either on your front window or your front door. And so when people go by looking for rainbows, they can see your really cool shoe fish. All right, so to create this drawing, obviously you're gonna need a shoe, a sheet of paper. Now you could use copy paper. The big thing here is though, you've gotta make sure that the paper is bigger than the shoe. All right, so depending on the size of your shoe, you might need to change the size of your paper. We have pencils, we also, I like to use a Sharpie. I'm going to color mine today with crayons and I'm also gonna paint the water with watercolor paint, uh, but it's really up to you how you wanna color these, whether it's with marker, color pencil, or even if you even wanna color it at all. So go ahead, grab those supplies and I'll meet you back here and uh, we'll get started. All right, here we go. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do starting with our blank sheet of paper is to take your shoe and place it on your paper in whatever direction you see fit. Uh, just a couple things, the area of the shoe where your toes would go, that's gonna be the front of the fish, all right? And the heel would be the tail fin. So you make the decision what direction you want your shoe fish to go in. Also, when you place it down, make sure that you have enough room to draw the fins around your fish, all right? So this is where I'm gonna place my fish I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm going to carefully trace all right so I have my shoe traced uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is start adding some details to make it look a little bit more like a fish uh, first thing I'm gonna do is near the top in the front I'm gonna add a circle for an eye I'm gonna put another circle inside of that and then another circle smaller circle inside of that to look like a little highlight now to make the fish lips, I'm gonna start with a half a smile, all right? And then I'm going to draw a bump that goes outside of the fish and then around to here, and then another bump underneath, which goes to the end of that smile like that. I'm going to erase the shoe line inside, and that gives me the fish lips. I might even draw a little highlight in here, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a fin, a top fin. Now it's completely up to you the type of fin that you'd wanna make. You could make a shark fin if you'd like. All right, this could be a shark shoe fish. You could even draw some uh, sharp teeth in there if you wanted to, up to you. I'm gonna draw a smaller fin here on the belly of the fish. I'm going to draw a tail fin. Now to do the tail fin, I'm gonna draw a line going this way another line on the bottom going this way, and then I'm gonna do that curved pointed line until those two lines meet, just like that. I also wanna have a little fin on the side of my shoe fish's body. Same idea, notice that all of the backs of my fins are kind of matching with that same um, curved pointed line design. I'm gonna add the end of my fin here, okay? Uh, I'm also gonna add some scales. And I'm gonna start here with a line of scales that separates the head from the body. I could draw all of these scales in here. That's a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do is just draw hints of those scales. I'm not gonna fill the whole body, but I'm gonna put enough in so it gives the viewer enough information to know that I'm adding scales or there's scales on the whole body. All right, uh, I'm gonna add some details into the fins. All 
okay? And there is the basic setup for my fish. So now, you know what, I'm gonna get that Sharpie and I'm gonna outline. Here we go. All right, so I have my shoe fish all outlined. The next thing I'm gonna do is start thinking about and drawing my environment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead right with Sharpie and do this, but if you wanna draw it out in pencil first, I think that's a good idea. That way if you make a mistake, you can fix it. But I've been doing this long enough, I'm just gonna go ahead with Sharpie in here. I'm gonna draw a line at the bottom for sand. I'm gonna leave that open for right now, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. I'm gonna add some seaweed. Now, the seaweed, I'm just kind of letting my marker dictate where I'm going to go. You really can't screw seaweed up. I'm just going to start at the uh, line where my sand is and I'm going to continue up towards the top of my paper and just make these swiggle lines. The only thing you should do is round the ends. Okay, uh, so there's a couple pieces of seaweed. Maybe over here I'll draw a starfish just kind of hanging out. Over here, I'm gonna draw something special. Let's see if you can figure it out. I'm gonna start with two lines going right here like this. I'm gonna make a bumpy line here. Another line over here like this. A line coming down like this. Have you figured it out yet? A line like this. Curve that line here. How about yet? Bring this line over here like this and curve that one there. Yep, I'm making a sunken treasure chest. All right, I'm gonna add some details here. Uh, maybe a handle. Some more details across the top. It's made out of wood, so I'm gonna add some lines going across it that look like wood. And maybe in the sand here around it, I'll add what looks kind of like a necklace maybe a couple coins. All right, and then behind there, some more seaweed. All right. Uh, up in here, I've got a little bit of space. I'm gonna draw something else to see if you can figure out what it is. I bet you that gave it away, huh? I hope you figured it out. my shark. And again, it's up to you what else you want to add here in your environment. Add anything you like. If you want to add a mermaid or a scuba diver or a sunken pirate ship to go with my treasure chest or like I did earlier, a hook with a worm. It's completely up to you. Have some fun with it and whatever you're going to add to it, I know it's going to be awesome. All right, so the next step is to color. And you can see here in my first example that as I mentioned before, I colored it using uh, crayons in this rainbow fashion. And not only did I borrow my daughter's shoe, but I also borrowed her crayon box. And so I used all the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So when I color with crayon, the technique that I'm gonna use, no matter what colors you use, I want you to press firm on the crayon. I want you to press really hard and make your colors really bold and make them stand out, real vibrant, all right? So rather than just lightly coloring like that, I want you to go in there, use a little bit of what we call elbow grease and really color in those areas. All right. I'm gonna save the eye and the mouth for a little bit later. Uh, the next color here, I'm gonna go with some orange. And that was a little bit of a different red. That was a violet red that I used. Any version of red will be good, all right? But I'm gonna go in here with orange next. And the way I created almost like this, um, I don't know if you wanna call it a tie-dye technique or an ombre technique where it kind of flows from one color to the next. I just went ahead and colored 
going left to right, or right to left, from top to bottom. And again, I want to try to cover all the white in that section. I don't want any of the white paper showing. I want to build up a nice thick layer of crayon. Make it really waxy. That is the key ingredient in these crayons is the wax. All right, orange is done. I'm going to go to yellow. Same technique. Pressing hard. Covering all the white. Going back and forth. And it's even okay if I overlap the colors just a little bit. That way I know that I've made, I've covered all the white. All right, I'm gonna continue on here. All right, so now I'm gonna speed up here and I'm gonna color the entire thing except for the water. So when you see this again, the only thing I'll have left to do is the water. All right, and so just like that, I have everything colored except for the water. And I'm gonna use a technique here with a white crayon. I'm going to draw some wavy lines going across my water to look like waves when I go to paint it. Now this is a little bit tricky because it's white on white paper, so it's gonna be difficult to see right away, but it will be there. And what I have to do, I'm gonna go over the lines a couple times, all right? And I'm gonna press really, really hard, all right? And the idea here is that the wax of the crayon is gonna create a barrier which when I add my blue paint, the white crayon will show through because it resists the water in the paint. The water kind of beads up and runs away from the crayon. So again, I'm kind of trying to keep track of where I put these lines in. I'm pressing hard. I don't have a lot of water, so I can't add a ton of lines, but I'm gonna add some here and there. Maybe another one over here, maybe one over here. All right, so I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna grab my watercolor paints. If you have regular paint, then that's fine. You can go ahead and use that. I've got, again, I'm borrowing all this from my daughter. Uh, I've got lots of different colors to choose from here, but I'm gonna go in with the blues here, and I'm gonna go with, let me move this over here. I'm gonna go with this dark blue. I'm gonna go with this dark blue here, right over here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm gonna wet that and just let it soak in for a little bit. These aren't really watercolor, they're more like tempera paint cakes, but they'll work just as good as watercolor paint. All right, so again, just add some water to saturate the paint. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna start painting. And look at there, right away, you can see one of the lines that I See how it's beating like that? That's where I put some of the crayon. All right, and so I'm just gonna paint around my fish and all my other objects. Now because you pressed hard on the crayon, even if I paint over an area, it should still show through. You can see that here because that wax is resisting the paint, not allowing it to stick to the paper. It's kind of a neat trick. And then I can go in here and just add some purple. And it's just gonna be hints of purple. It's not gonna be super dark because my paper is wet. I've added a lot of water to my paint. And I'm not gonna paint purple over everything, just in certain areas, all right? And you can kind of see here where I have some white crayon in the water to help create the sense of waves. And there's your drawing. All right, so that's it for our lesson on how to draw a shoe fish. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to see some of your creations. You can send them to me via email. I'll throw my address up on the screen. And uh, keep watching out for more videos. I have some more things that I'm going to be sharing with you soon. Uh, so until then, uh, if you're enjoying this, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. All right, thanks. Bye.